Less than five months ago, we weren't even halfway through the year, Rode released their $200 wireless Go mic. It looked so compelling that I immediately bought two sets, tested them, and then promptly named them my 2019 Audio Gear of the Year. Innovation, size, weight, display, battery life, real-world performance. I literally couldn't imagine something coming along this year to top it. And then I got my hands on the Pico mic from Pico Gear. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to talk about the one device which just may cause me to reverse myself on our 2019 Audio Gear of the Year Award, Pico Gear's extraordinary Pico mic. But before I do, a few reminders in reverse chronological order. First, we have just one spot left for our Streets of New York workshop two, starting October 20th. This is a very special, very personal endeavor for us. And if past this prologue, we think it will be for you too. If this is interesting to you, please hop over to www.3bmep.com slash streets2. Check it out and grab that spot while it's still available. I'll also put the link to the page in the show notes down below, as well as a link to the video we did for it just last month. Next, Trolls, Tribes, and Transformation. I'll be speaking about social media at Fuji Love Live on October 12th, also in New York City. Whether you're into social media or boycotting it, all I can tell you is that my friend Tomasz has put together a heck of a roster of speakers and schedule for Fujifilm enthusiasts. Go to fujilove.com and then look for Fujilove Live 2019. I'll put the full link down in the show notes as well for you to sign up. Third, we are so oversubscribed for our photo walk on October 5th that I don't want to mismanage expectations, but... If you like the idea of spending an early fall afternoon shooting street photography with like-minded people in the greatest city in the world for it, and it's free, check out Scott Kelby's www.worldwidephotowalk.com and either put yourself on the waiting list or see if there are other walks in the city that appeal to you, maybe someplace else. We had a blast last year, and I'm sure we will again. Finally, I'll be speaking about the economics of YouTubing at the Greater Philadelphia Videographers Association get-together this coming week. Actually, tomorrow, Tuesday, September 17th, at Manny Young Brewery. It's a nice opportunity to meet your fellow professionals over a beer and eats. And uh, you can sign up at this very long and non-intuitive link here, which I'll also put in the show notes below. It should be good fun. to the Pico mic, and I'll cut straight to the chase. It is absolutely the most clever, compact, easy to use, and complete two mic wireless setup I've ever seen. Pretty close to my ideal wireless mic system for on-location interviews, two-person interviews. To place this in context, I'll put links into the show notes down below as well, tracing my struggle to find the ultimate combination of sound quality, size, weight, battery life, ease of use, and value in audio, going all the way back to a Zoom H4N and Rode NTG2, that was a shotgun, through the Sennheiser second generation EW100, the Rode Smart Lab on my iPhone, the Sony UWP, the Rode NTG4 Plus on a Tascam DR70D, the Rode Link Filmmaker Kits, the Sennheiser fourth generation EW100 and NKE600, then the AVX, the XSW, and most recently the Rode Wireless Go. I mean, audio has advanced tremendously in just a few years, but there is one thing, maybe two for now, holding the Pico mic back from unseating the Rode, more testing to come. Though, to put this into perspective, it has to be said, the Rode Go is so good that it edged out what had been the front runner to that point, Sennheiser's then $350 XSW. In fact, the road has had such an impact on the market that as of today, and again, I'm recording this in mid-September 2019, the XSW is now selling for the same $200 as the Go, Sennheiser ME2 Lab included, which of course it has to be because it does not have a dedicated integrated mic. Let's get into the details. The Pico mic is an all-in-one, two mic, dual channel setup that is a functional mashup of the Rode Wireless Go and something like Sony's $700 dual channel UWP receiver along with its own unique twists. So what do I mean by that? Well, like the Sony URX P03D, the PicoStream receiver is a dual channel unit which handles two transmitters, a single three and a half millimeter cable connecting it to the camcorder or recorder. 
Like the Go, however, the Pico mic uses no fuss, no muss, spread spectrum frequency hopping. This kind of technology allows much faster setup and takedown, no futzing with frequency scans, and automatically, seamlessly handles interference at a whole new level than the technology found in traditional robust pro systems like Sony's UWP or Sennheiser's EW100, which still have their place. Because the flip side is that that traditional technology is much better over distances and through obstructions full stop. Like the Go, each of the two Pico transmitters has a built-in mic. Unlike the Go, there's no mic jack, but the Pico mic integrated transmitter mic packages are much smaller and lighter, easier to place, and more likely to stay in place. Like the Go, the Pico gear system has a very complete information display. The clever bit was the decision to leave all the heavy lifting, as far as visual feedback is concerned, to the receiver display, which, while larger than the GOES, is also more complete and easier to see. The Pico transmitters each have a single onboard LED to show whether or not they are on with everything else displayed on the receiver's large and colorful display. This level of easily accessible feedback is critical to peace of mind while filming. I really, really appreciate it. Better yet, the Pico mic offers transmitter gain adjustments in eight discrete steps from minus 18 to plus 30 decibels. It also offers attenuation of the receiver output from zero all the way down to minus 54 dB across 13 steps. This compares to a three-step unmarked adjustment for the receiver only on the road and yeah, no adjustment on Sennheiser's XSW. And unlike the road, you can not only see but control all of this for both mics from the single Pico Stream receiver. To get close to that kind of control with a pair of GOES at the camera, you'd have to augment them with something like the $349 Panasonic XLR mic adapter, which we own and like a lot. But when you add to that the further weight of two XLR adapters and a second cable, call it another 30 bucks, total package weight almost triples, as does size and cost. At that point, that is, once you've introduced an intermediary device like that adapter, I prefer the Sennheiser XSWs to GOES because there are no cables and they offer noticeably better low-end grunt. But so long as they plug in <sighs> upside down so we can't see the singular LED status, that preference is so mitigated that until Sennheiser sorts it out, I'd man up for the more expensive but more informative and interchangeable battery-equipped AVX, which remains our cost-no-object studio wireless favorite. Back to the Pico mic again. It uses built-in rechargeable batteries like the Go, and the XSW and AVX for that matter, versus double A's in the Sony Sennheiser's own EW100 system, and now that I think about it, Rhodes Filmmaker Lab system as well. The Pico mic has better battery life than the Go, somewhere between 10 and 20 hours. As I said a moment ago, the transmitter is smaller and lighter than the Go transmitter, so much so that I don't have the problem I occasionally do with the Go of folding in on itself when you're using, let's say, a crew neck attached to the shirt and actually muffling the sound because it hits my skin. It's practically invisible, that is the Pico mic, where the Go, especially the clip, is large enough and Rode took advantage of the real estate to make it a bit of a billboard for the company, which, I mean, I love Rode, but I know likey this. Though, if your clothing is sheer enough, you'll see the Pico mic's single LED through it. Easy enough to solve with a band-aid, but it actually makes more sense, I think, to have the LED on the back side of the transmitter. Other advantages of the Pico system. The receiver has a built-in headphone jack with adjustable volume. It uses a single cable because it has a built-in auto-switching TRS-TRRS function, so it can be used on a smartphone without adapter. Again, clever, but hold that thought. Unlike anything I've seen before. The mics charge inside a cradle integrated into the receiver, each of them held in place by unseen magnets, and while they are charging, they are automatically muted. Again, clever, complete. In other words, major league, less futzing. It's just really well thought out. In total, the Pico mic is roughly the same size and weight of a pair of GOES, and at 450, within spitting distance of a pair at 199 each, 200, 400 for the pair. Brilliant. But one 
Unlike the Rode, as I said earlier, there is no option to plug in a dedicated lavalier mic for ultimate sound quality and concealability. Nor is there any kind of pop screen or dead cat, though this would be easy enough to remedy with something like Rycote overcovers paired with their new advanced donut shaped stickies. I really like those, recommend them for any time you're using a lav. Still, a mic jack would be nice. Two, rather than just plug and play with our workhorse GH5, there is an anomaly between the GH5 and the Pico requiring you to go into the Pico Stream menu system and manually setting the output to TRS rather than relying on that auto selection function. Again, that is between TRS and TRRS. This is not a biggie, but when you're a one-man band or two-man band, it quickly reaches a point when every exception or additional parameter setting, every additional cable, feels like an exponential increase in complexity. I hope either Panasonic and Pico gear or together sort it. There is also a choice of two cables one used to further reduce the output to the camera or recorder. Of course, I just wish there were one to do the job. Three, I'm not sure how robust the Pico system is. I mean, I've had no problems with it to date, none. Still, I'm reasonably certain it's less robust than the Sennheiser XSW. My instinct is that it is less robust than the Go as well. I will not, however, be doing any drop test anytime soon. Sorry. Four, most importantly, I found it yeah, a little challenging to tame the Pico Mic's noise floor. The issue is attenuated dramatically when using the Pico Mic's defeatable noise reduction, but to the keen ear, the ear listening for it, the electronic wizardry is inferior to an actual lower sound floor. I prefer turning off the noise reduction and doing a little more work than usual in post with Isotopes RX-7, my go-to, though I think for most people this would probably not be noticeable. And in a pinch, like trade show coverage where time is of the essence, I might just leave it turned on. Yeah. But how does it sound to you? Because, as you might have imagined or heard, I've been using all three and switching them periodically without any of the usual post-production work. Actually, four. I threw in a Tascam DR-10L for grins, which has its own advantages when you're recording solo, including no concern for range or interference, and the option of dual-track recording as insurance against clipping. But I personally prefer monitoring mics in real time from the camera directly, so it's very rare that I'd use the DR10L instead of the Go in that instance. As for range testing the Pico mic, forget about it. I tried, but within 30 feet of the front door, all three wireless systems cut out completely. This is the downside of spread spectrum frequency hopping, so if you need the best performance where line of sight is compromised, again, as I noted before, more traditional systems like the Sony or Sennheiser's G4 line make more sense. Fortunately, this is not an issue for us, as we use wireless labs for interviews where the cameras are rarely more than nine feet from our subjects, and they are facing the camera. Finally, latency. Some people worry about this, but for the work we do, I don't. That's because as long as you're using two mics of the same model, latency is a systematic issue, easy enough to fix in post, whether it's being recorded directly into camera or separate recorder. Actually, you can fix it in post even if you use two different mics, but I'd rather not have to bother with that. Live music is another matter altogether, but this isn't really the use case for the Pico mic. That's it, other than it would be a nice touch if Pico used a touch display. Not necessary as the function buttons do the job and are pretty intuitive, but the screen is so big and the UI so nice that it just begs to be tapped. Bluetooth control from your phone would be nice, but that's being really, really piggy and would cut down on battery life, so never mind. I'll sum it up this way. I find myself a little torn. My instinct these days is to pack the Pico mic first ahead of a pair of Go's or Really, anything else for that matter, because it is so well thought out, so much smaller, self-contained, less obtrusive, easier and faster to set up and take down than a properly complemented two-pair Go setup, and vastly more informative than a properly complemented XSW system. When I want to travel leanest, I can use the Pico mic on, say, our A6400 and still monitor both mics through the Pico mic's headphone jack. Though, if I only need one mic, say for vlogging on the street, I'll just take a single Go kit. That's the smallest there is. Then again, I usually take two Go's just in case because you never know who you might meet. 
in which case I'll carry a splitter cable and extra stickies. When we head out for an interview, the Panasonic GH5 is always our ACAM. It's bulletproof. The preamps on it are better than those on the A6400, much better than those on Nikon's C7, and I have finer grained control when working with the XLR adapter and a pair of goes. At that point, though, I'm adding the weight and volume of that XLR adapter and attaching the second go to the side of the XLR with one of those stickies and those other XLR adapters, you know, just a little metal thing. Suboptimal, more futzing, though still dramatically smaller and lighter than the kit I was carrying just two years ago. The irony is that for the moment, I find myself carrying twice as much audio kit as I normally do. The Pico mic system speaks to me, and I want to use just one system, but until I have enough experience with it, I bring the goes because I know how to dial them in and their ability to plug in lav mics gives me placement and concealability options the Pico system cannot. At least, for now. Call the Pico Gear System our runner-up 2019 audio gear of the year, a few more hours with it or one update cycle away, perhaps, from taking the cake. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation below. You guys continue to be just incredible, knowledgeable, inspiring, funny. I mean, you're a joy, truly. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Grab one or both of our new Hold That Thought t-shirts you wanted us to put up at our new 3bmepthreadless.com store. Support our work by using our affiliate links down below in the show notes, dropping us coffee money via our PayPal link down below in the show notes, or even better than that, we invite you to become a patron of our work over at Patreon. Link down below. We've created our Patreon page because we are stoked to bring you not only gear reviews, but with our What Were You Thinking and Good World Gone Bad series, historical, educational, artistic morsels, and longer form conversations, not interviews, with world-class photographers, curators, gallery owners, keepers of the legacy, folks like Elliot Erwitt, Anya Sear, Mark Lubell, Ethelene Staley, and friends like Brian Smith, Paul Giroux, Nino Rakicevich, and more. We'd really like you to join us to deliver this kind of content regularly. Your support on Patreon will really help us ramp it up. In which case, as always, we thank you for it. That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.